What is going on ladies and gentlemen, welcome back to the Shoot the Shit podcast. I'm your host, Anthony, and today I'm here with my cousin, Andrew, who's a, really a jack of all trades when, when it comes down to doing things. Um, from author to music creator to, as of recently, video game designer, <laughs> uh, graphic designer, artist, on top of managing a full-time job, part-time job, and freaking college. I don't, I don't know how you have the time to do everything. Yeah, uh, I don't either, man. Like, in all honesty, um, now that you lay it out as far as all the roles and, and really throwing out the introduction, it is, in my head, something that I'm really trying to figure out how I keep it all organized, right? Yeah. Um, I think the video game designer role is definitely something new and and a title that I'm still looking to earn and just recently putting out the announcement when it came to, like, by 30 having a video game is like okay like I have that much time to really learn the skills of, of, of game designing and yeah it's good to be on on shoot the shit it is very much something that it's very laid back something to kick back on yeah on top of all that I mentioned obviously uh, personal paradigms launched for season two um, first two episodes are out now right just about yeah, yeah. with the uh, first the first introduction this episode had just released earlier this month. Right. Uh, actually, no, the, um, the last day of December, right. or New Year's Eve. Uh, the second one just got announced, and it's going to be released perhaps, I think, in about two weeks. Yeah. And then, as far as the two videos, there's going to be one that's going to be released soon. It, it's more of like a, like a bonus. Right. So those ones are going to be like 1.5 or 1. 1. point or like 2.5 because it's just like added it's kind of like a filler right so to speak a little behind the scenes everything what made you want to add the the video aspect to the podcast this season obviously the first season was all audio right. and everything what made you want to give a more visual to the audience this season well part part of it was getting just the the visuals as far as like a lot of the audio like a lot of podcasts they're really cool and anchor does support a lot of the audio behind it right I think for me what was missing is the real action of like our responses our emotions a lot of our interactions that really go on behind the scenes Joe Rogan does such a great job of having those visuals um, some of the other guys that I do watch too they have like full action shows and so partly that was one of the things that really guided me as far as wanting to get the visuals um, I've seen it plenty of times with with uh, some of the people that I've, I've, I've worked along with and, and they have their their segments visualized as well and so I kind of want to add on to the podcast also being like a visual sort of aesthetic and I also want to practice like a lot of my videography yeah that's another thing to add is you, you just got into or you been slowly getting into photography even more too um, obviously with the first book that you published uh, you, you had a lot of visuals added in there and with the second book that you're publishing uh from my understanding behind the scenes you want to add more originality to it right yeah yeah that's that's partly the same that, i mean that was the core element that i was missing was original photography um the first book and a lot of the sources that i pulled from were so gracious enough to offer their photography at no commercial cost or anything as far as licensing and and to me, like with my own publication, I felt like that was something that I really wanted to capitalize on with this next piece was to have my additional original content in the form of photography. And I figured, well, if I'm getting a camera and getting into the visual parts of it, I might as well knock out two birds and one stone and learn videography too. And and so like just by your grace too and all of the, the skills that you got as far as videography and photography, I figured, well, okay, like with some of the software that you used and we talked about like Filmora and mm -hmm. I was like oh cool like so I went down that rabbit hole and I downloaded it and I figured well now since that was when the first book dropped and I wanted to add like a small component to that first book of just like small small videos right of, of the coverage and I got inspired by a couple of YouTube videos and I realized well this is something that I kind of want to carry with me um, into the second book not only using my photography that I've taken but to also add a lot of visuals and other projects that I want to do right yeah I mean because obviously I think now more than ever 
is the time to get out there and really visualize and, and take pictures of the world because we're constantly going through changes uh, everywhere. So now is like the best time to capture all that history on, you know, f on photography. So, I mean, especially with the city like Los Angeles, where it's a very, you know, big city. Everybody knows Los Angeles. It's like the freaking capital of the entertainment world. Right. With everything that's going on, I mean, everything uh, that that city alone has so much history and everything. Just photography from that alone, obviously. You know, you, in the first book, you had some personal stories with, of course, uh, family, yourself. Uh, and just kind of other things and I think what will capitalize for this on the second book uh, which by the way I have not re read anything yet. he's he's doing he's doing it all still uh, but uh, just assuming if it's gonna be another personal novel uh, of more life experiences and stuff uh, another thing that I can capture on obviously is you know taking pictures of places that you've been to that kind of give a visual as what to your reading yeah no um, I have I have no doubt that I think this next project is going to be more ambitious as far as the way that I want to carry it out and to really start now going out and bringing it to everybody's attention I'm I'm totally open to wanting to speak more about it it's definitely something that I want to really be transparent about and to really just open up uh, a lot of conversations on it and yeah you pretty much nailed it in terms of the photography that I captured is very much home close to home um, a lot of the places that I, I was born and raised in a lot of the spaces that um, I captured that really bring Los Angeles to the forefront of a lot of the issues that we deal with. Um, one of them being like homelessness and, and, and gang activity and a lot of those stories they do carry that kind of weight just because of, of some of those subcultures that often go missing in LA. It's not always just about like Hollywood and, and glamour and a lot of these videos and a lot of these, these entertainment values that are, that are not only, they're great, they're really beautiful, but right. I think some of the things that often go unmissed on miss is a lot of the greediness behind it and and um, really using that story a lot of those experiences into um, something that is is honorable and so that's partly what I wanted to do going into this next project was to for one capture a lot of my young adulthood and my senior year in high school and to see a lot of that growth and a lot of those different um, expressions of not only what I experienced but also trying to find like pictures now and photos now within these past two years and to see if it is still relevant and I want to say that it is still very much relevant you know? right and and that's kind of what the second book um, emphasizes is a lot of themes that I've got to see growing up and especially now on the flip side and going into the field that I love so dearly and to really carry the arts with me is something that I've I really wanted to kind of pull together and integrate. And right. Yeah. It's been a yeah, it's been a it's been a journey, man. Obviously with, with the pandemic going on, it's it's obviously a little harder to get out there and go places and do things. Um, but I think for some reason you find some way you find it to make it work out for you. Which <laughs> it, it is a struggle, yeah. but I mean it works out in the end, uh, just seeing you doing things. And I remember early on when uh, recording some of the episodes of Personal Paradigm, yeah, you were traveling to places far and getting stuff and, and recording and and much like us, I mean, obviously we're still it's it's really it's a new age of of how to to get around to still deliver content, make content, and do it in a safe way, right. um, because obviously we're doing a lot of what we do over Zoom, yeah, you know, and uh, it was funny because I was actually talking to my my buddy about this the other day how. Skype used to be like the number one video calling thing of all time. Skype? Who's that? Yeah, no, <laughs> I, I honestly though like, and then Zoom like really came over during this pandemic and I think this was like the best time for uh, a source like that to really open up. So I think they've made so much money within, from March all the way till now, like, yeah, it, it's nuts because I went, we actually like, I think in, back in like April or May, like we, we, we couldn't use Zoom because like I didn't pay the payment I think or something. So I was like yeah, saying, yeah, it was a monthly payment. Yeah, Zoom is still a monthly payment. You could do yearly too, I think. But um, we uh, we tried out Skype again and it just was shitty. Yeah, it was bad. And I was like, what happened to this? This used to be like the thing to to video chat on. And I remember. Now it's Zoom. Zoom's like the number one 
it's just amazing how 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 you see a transitional period of things happening uh especially like with everything going on it's it, it's like it's it's interesting to, to kind of dive in and find new ways to create content and also keep the content flowing yeah i agree man it's i mean the last time i was really heavy into video communication was probably 16 through omegle right and like all those different like odd oh there's this one that i used it was way back when i was talking to my buddies and man i, t I don't even think omegle was it was another name or something but in any case yeah skype was one of them um and to do it now to, to kind of reflect back and, and still make video communication a real thing um zoom took it by storm it's it's something that i've been interested in um and wanting to grasp and gather and and really find newer ways to communicate i mean for us to really have now uh, a space where we're communicating like we have just the fortune of, of living together for mm -hmm. the most part and so now we can run this and, and being fellow creators uh we have that luxury i think the question is how do we still continue to communicate and to really keep brands going and keep uh, platforms alive in this space zoom pretty much is the answer and taking very calculated risks as far as going out and seeing like people that are safe but even still like i've done that and it's 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 not my my most go-to like solution um yeah i mean I, I mean you remember when even before the pandemic we were constantly week by week having different guests in in the studio here right and so many people got to interview in studio and I, i've always loved in-person in studio interviews because you get to know the person beyond the camera and stuff but right. it, it, yeah i mean this is honestly this one right here that we're doing this is like the first like in in studio like here podcast that i've done since a while i think since march was like the last in studio podcast that i did in here but in general uh when i went to sammy's we did a couple in-person podcasts there which was in november so it, it's definitely a change on us uh especially because we're used to interviewing people like try to like we try to go weekly with it um right. and we we've been really since the new year started we've been trying to grind out the content and trying to really keep up ahead of the game really yeah. um i'm so organized this year so far and let's hope it stays this way but i have videos planned all the way till august wow that's yeah that's definitely a bigger stretch compared to me like i'm just starting to get onto the train of routine content right. posting and as much as i do really want to focus on scheduling and getting um guests onto the, onto the show or onto the episode and the conversations i'm still figuring out like how else can i really build um around not only the po podcast community but also to really bring in like people that are just like killing it in their fields right or right. Like, killing it in their passions yeah and, and so like I'm just glad that like I have other different projects that I do as far as not just recording and writing but also music and so I have a lot of those that I can push out or designing and have something just to kick off and same here like I've I think I have stacked up enough to where it could get me into the next couple months just because right. of how much like behind the scenes photos I have and all the designs that I've, I've dropped and and even like snippets of the book and and even just back-end content of promoting all that stuff that now I just need to take a step back and realize, like, okay, like, I got all of this stuff. I got, like, all these things. How can I plan to really drop it and to make it just have it and keep it current? Mm -hmm. So, yeah, to hear that you got until August, like, that's... that's I, I have, yeah, I have video. We have videos planned out till August. Uh, as far as guests goes, I think we have them planned out till March. But you got to remember, too, I, it's like, especially with the podcast, I mean, uh, shoot the shit obviously we're making seasonal now uh from january to june and then from like pretty much july all the way till next january is when we it's one less thing we have to worry about because obviously with july and august start coming that's when like usually the haunts start getting closer halloween season yeah september comes and that's when the haunts usually start and then october comes and it's a busy month in october then november we're doing like post interviews and and getting guests on the show right. talk about their haunts and then obviously December is usually kind of our break season, yeah. Where we take like the last two weeks off, but it, it's it, 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 I have to kind of I'm trying to stay 
more consistent. I'm, I want to do at least two to three uploads a week, whether it's two podcasts and a video or two videos and a podcast. Um, Mindless Horror Podcast goes every week. Shoot the shit. I'm aiming for like at least one or two a month. Oh, right on. Yeah. And um, other videos and content come out as they go. So I have videos planned up until August, um, but schedules may change um, due to the fact that, especially when haunt season rolls around throughout. Usually, when if like for example, Halloween Horror Nights, when they start announcing stuff, it's as early as February to like May's. That's early as February. Yeah. yeah. So there's so, year round really planning a lot. Yeah. In. They they say I think I think. I think one time I heard the um, creative director actually talk about, like, as he was finishing up with, like, one season, he was already getting ideas and starting to do planning for the next season. You know, that's how I felt when I was when I was doing a lot of writing, because especially with, with, the, with the launch of the first book, I mean, although the whole back scenes of that and really the whole creative process behind it was, like, like, finalizing the first book and knocking it out and getting it all set up, I was already developing the concepts for the next book right like it was very much about say 75 percent through the manuscript and then once once like you know like the first book xi <laughs> Excellent. Uh, it's actually i think it's right there under, oh, right. it's under under all those books and stuff oh yeah, yeah it's right here yeah I yeah mean, once it's all oh that's there that one's right there yeah there it is man yeah if you want to pull it out throw it up right here what yeah but once, yeah i've been that's all the books i've been reading lately yeah, once the first, yeah, this, man, this little bad boy right here, yeah. this is it, man. That's yeah, it. once this book right here, like, was already in the publication process, and it already started, like, taking off, and I really wanted to dive in on on a lot of the um, marketing and trying to get on with different yeah. different bloggers and, and even a lot of my friends. Like, when it, when it took off, it, it really took off, given a lot of the, a lot of the COVID stuff that was around that time. I mean... I really wish that I had the chance to connect with different bookstores and and a lot of these different platforms that I could show up. But granted, I want I always want to wait until it's safe. So I think when it came to really dropping that first one, I already knew what the second one was going to be about. It was very much just. In Is the second to one going to be called XII? No, it's <laughs> um the working title. I think is Second Chances in the Fall. Oh, okay. Uh, what, what, <laughs> for, for, obviously, the XI, the Roman, that's 11, right? Yeah, it's, it's What's 11. the, what's the meaning behind that? The meaning behind 11, um, so you know how somebody, like, usually asks you, on a scale from 1 to 10, how do you feel, mm -hmm. right? Um, it's a common question that is asked that we try to quantize within the mental health field. Right. And, you know, 1 is very much low, 10, feeling great. I really wanted to capture breaking your barriers and really breaking your limits and right. going past just that scale and right. hitting 11 and so within the introduction it does explain that as far as like how how I felt in certain times like where in certain times I really wanted to break limits and break barriers and right and so that was the intention behind XI 11 and I didn't want to write just like one one on it so yeah. I flipped it into the a Roman numerals style, yeah into Roman numeral numeral Roman numerals are obviously a uh a big thing in, in history and society too obviously a lot of right. people use them and for all that but uh yeah i mean books available now for anyone who wants to buy it uh available on usually pretty much everything like amazon target walmart where else barnes and noble barnes and noble yeah. um yeah it's 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 located pretty much anywhere you can find it target walmart online it's mostly online yeah it's all online um pretty much and i think that's what a lot of people transition to anyway with these days but uh 11 a collection of poetry on being human uh is out now definitely go pick up a copy for yourself um i've read it uh, i think everyone in this house has read it it's a yeah. very very good story a mix of emotions uh for this throughout the entire book as you're reading so uh hopefully I mean, the way I took it is just trying to get in a personal connection with one-on-one -on -one in a way. I mean, there, there's something for everyone in there, I think, in this book. Yeah, there's something in relation to everyone that everyone's been through at least something related to something, you know? Yeah, it was it was a pretty impactful uh, story. A lot of my friends, when they read it, they connected on it, and they would show me, like, the different pages that they really resonated with. And, like, it was a trip because my kindergarten teacher, she got the book, and 
she was so excited we reconnected and then she ended up mailing me a postcard uh, on how much like it, it kind of really connected with her right not only like on that level but also being like her first student to actually write something and to really experience that kind of dynamic it's like I never had that kind of uh, feedback from from like a teacher and it, uh, to me I really think I really wanted to just make it an opening for uh, a lot of literary works a lot of people just to really connect on right. or find some kind of um, find some kind of like reflection on it mm -hmm. and so that was that was my intention going in just because of the time that I was writing it during that uh, during those those uh, those years it was like 2017 I think right and um, yeah so so I'm glad you got that I'm glad you got that that, that meaning out of it because yeah. that's that was my goal was like it didn't matter like how many numbers that that I was trying to push as far as me but it was more of just the uh, the impact and I think it really really drove home for like my buddies and things like that yeah so yeah uh, obviously the book is doing really good then um, I've heard I've heard honestly nothing but great reviews about it which is awesome um, and I'm glad people are enjoying it connecting to it um, and I can't wait to see uh, how people think of the sequel and, oh, and when the next book man uh, obviously I know you're trying to basically do maybe one every year or every other year depending on yeah. how it goes for you in life or just in general how, how long you want to make the books this one's a pretty good sized book honestly as far as it goes I mean um, I, I remember watching you edit it a lot when you were in here and just watching a lot of revisions being made or something you didn't like you took it out or just a, if a photo didn't fit right you're like oh, maybe I could find something else yeah, um, yeah. There was a lot of that, and I and I see you every now and then when I walk through in the back, uh, doing the same thing with the second book. So, yeah. it's um, it's ready, it's ready to start bringing the discussion. Right. It, it's ready to really just keep the momentum going around what what my goal is for this year. Uh, I already have a release date for September fifteenth. It's the start of of our roots of National um, Heritage Month or. Yeah, Hispanic Heritage Month. Nice. Uh, September fifteenth is when it's gonna drop, and you know there are some themes of, of feeling rooted um, in a lot of different histories that were passed down to us. Um, right. And so a lot of a lot of little bit of some ancestral stuff, and and yeah, the layout the layout's gonna be a lot more cleaner this time around. Um, I know this does this not feel clean for you or what? It it did when I when I really started it out and I had the formatting down um that was like the best that i could do with all the skills that i had as far as really having the layout and the organization of the book and i think this time around i kept asking myself how can i top you know this initial book and repeatedly really trying to outdo my own self and so that book i think is 136 pages this one is pushing about 250 this next one Damn. Yeah, so it's taking that and really putting it into what I want to knock out now is it's very much what I had in mind when it came to the second book was very much like, alright, like I had 136. Yeah. What can I push out now? It's and like I'm like a, a hundred and thirty material, obviously, uh, with all the poems and everything, but then of course some the acknowledgments, table of contents, and everything. Yeah, looking exactly. about almost like 135, 140. Um, I mean, it's like I said, it's a very good book for a lot of people who um, either are in your field or you know live life relation, you know, like that psychology, like a psychology kind of you know area field and stuff. So I, I think it's a lot of people, even if you're not in that field, it's just a good read. Uh, it's just something to just pick up and, and just read. Hopefully, eventually, uh, you get kids across the country doing book reports to it. That would that would honestly be pretty dope. I mean, that that is my initial intention is to go, to is to go into like colleges and to speak post COVID, of course, and to really just share a lot of um, experiences that I had in becoming like a creator and an author and and really doing the the, the whole do it yourself thing. Mm -hmm. And I think that's really where I I really flourish is wanting to do it more independently and to find independence in a lot of creations and so yeah having having the software was great as far as 
wanting to learn how to publish a book. Right. If I hadn't had that software that knocked me out in terms of just really challenging myself to learn it, and then all of a sudden like some, some publishing company showed up on my Instagram, then I don't know if I would have released it at that time because it was very much like, cool, like I got the publication. <laughs> so when I say, if I ever like introduce you to this guy in person and I say this guy can literally do everything, I'm not even fucking joking when I say that. Like, this guy <laughs> could literally do everything. Uh, he t does so much. And, like, I, I just don't know how he finds the time to do everything. He just kind of manages his time a little bit uh, better than I do, actually. So, um, yeah, man, I, I'm really excited for the second book. Uh, the first book was phenomenal. And I think, uh, I think a lot of people are looking forward to that second book. So, uh, September 15th, 2021. Uh, Make sure to get your pre-orders ready when they go are available for pre-order. I mean, this is this is we got literally lots of time Pretty away. Time, yeah. It's only January as we're recording this, so I mean, we got tons of time until that comes out. But when the pre-orders go up, uh, follow him on social media. Um, what is it? Graphics by Andrew still? Yeah, still graphics by Andrew. Graphics by Andrew. Uh, check it out, uh, and he'll let you know all the information um, when they are available for pre-order. But when are we gonna when are we gonna write our fucking comic book, man? That's right. You know what? I was thinking about that recently. And I'm going to have to go under like Zaragoza Publishing or something like that. I'm really down. I, I thought about wanting to really venture out more into different publications and to really start out with the comic book formatting. I'm Cause pretty then, down. Because then you can go back to your roots roots, obviously, with drawing. Yeah. That's where it all started right there for you, really. Yeah, like illustration. And I mean, nowadays, having the illustration down i have all the, the brushes for it, the brush kits online and formatting you got the story you got all the stories even if you were to just rough concepts even we can do it just old school pen and pa pen and pen and paper you know what i mean just throw some rough concepts out and then we're ready to bring it onto the internet then fucking do it but yeah man I, we got to get on that uh especially maybe after the second book that could be something we work on for like the third book or something something new you know it's like okay you've seen the poetry side of andrew let's go for the fucking yeah. the fiction side of andrew I, I really thought about integrating a lot of fictional stories or, or stories that rooted in well it was very much like a lot of the masters you know just yeah. the way that they really apply it but it is it is something that i'm interested in doing are we gonna do go the horror route or is it more like i'll go any route that writes us a good story Oh well, yeah, that's definitely right. I mean, I don't care if it's horror, if it's action, uh, superhero, superhero horror. <laughs> you know, it's like just whatever, whatever we can create. And if it's a good story and solid, let's just go with it. You know, it's it doesn't even have to be. It, it doesn't matter. It can be a fucking love story for all I care. <laughs> <laughs> no, yeah, throwing it in a graphic novel format would be pretty dope. I mean, yeah, my cousin oh, Gabriel, he's all up in the anime right now. And right. It's, yeah, like it's. We just uh, we we just watched a movie recently on Netflix that was pretty good. That, oh, was uh, it Zant G? Uh, Grants, Grants, Grants or Grants uh, Zero? Grants Zero, dude, that movie was. Well, let's talk about the animation in that film real quick. It's just like it was made in Japan, so the movie's dubbed in English for for Netflix for right. for America, and um, the animation in that is just like a video game. It, it was. Looked beautiful it reminded me of final fantasy um graphics as far as the newer age ones. it reminded me of final fantasy met world of warcraft because the way they do their like cutscenes and stuff oh right i kind of got that vibe from some of the even some of like the monsters and stuff that you saw i was like this is like really world of warcrafty but this is like an anime twist on it yeah i i was talking to my teammate about it today at work and the best way that i, exp I tried to explain it was hunger games meets tron meets what was it um attack on titan pretty much with those monsters yeah yeah man those monsters were wicked. i mean just that one boss monster he went through like four or five different phases and it was like jesus man and each phase he just got stronger better look cooler and yeah. it, it was a nuts movie man it was it was something where i walked into this movie like okay this this might be good i mean the concept i read just the synopsis and i'm like this it looks pretty good and then we started watching it, and just right off the bat, just people fighting. These guns like have a delay, but then when they when they do hit them, freaking head explodes. And I I could not wrap my head around it. I was the ending was what threw me off the most because 
I'm still trying to figure out like if he actually did use his points to resurrect her or if I don't know like or if they were all in on it and really just helping him grow right. and they were just there just to help them right develop themselves it was I got a Wikipedia of that because I don't know what <laughs> happened man like yeah no I, I looked up this thinking it was probably because a lot of these Japanese based um, you know stories are usually based off anime mangas and stuff like that so I, I looked this up thinking you know maybe this is based off a of manga and if it is I'm gonna have to read this right um, and this was its own thing it was original and I guess they just came up with it a concept they got the they got the rights and they freaking worked with partnered with Netflix and they got it done so it, That's it's pretty it's pretty cool that, that they got that kind of originality and I would love to see this company maybe do a Resident Evil uh, animated movie or like video games in that matter because they they filmed it i mean the, the the way it looked it looked like a video game it looked like something you'd see in a video game oh yeah was this their first project that they did i i don't know if this company has done any other projects they probably have but i think this is a first probably like big one that got more attention than just in japan you know what i mean or at least it, that's what it felt like because this one was a it's a trippy movie, man. Even the monsters in there are just... There's the freaking heads on wheels that are on fire and shit. I'm just like, what the hell is going on in this movie? Yeah, it was definitely something that I was just from start to finish. I mean, I remember coming out of work and I got home and you guys put it on. It was, it was four minutes in. I was like, okay, perfect. Like, I'm going to kick it. I'm going to hang out. And then we watched it and I was like, wow, this is very much something that yeah. I really was interested in. Got uh Speaking of which, I mean, I don't know when this will... This is going to air in a, probably a few weeks, and this has probably already come out, so we probably have already seen it. Right. But uh, obviously, WandaVision's coming out next or this Friday. Two-episode premiere, man. Is it already this Friday? This Friday. I can't wait for that. Yeah, dude. I mean, obviously, it's been a couple of weeks since The Mandalorian ended with such a phenomenal ending to Season 2, wrapping up a storyline. And now, we're in the new age of the Marvel. It, this is actually going to be the first project for Phase 4 of Marvel, because we were supposed to get Black Widow. Right. COVID stopped that. Uh, then we were supposed to get Falcon and Winter Soldier back in August. COVID stopped that. Uh, and then we were supposed to get the Eternals. COVID delayed that. Oh. And WandaVision was actually supposed to come out in December, but then got pushed back to January, which wasn't too bad. Uh, obviously, it's just another, it's like a one month difference, but. And then we're finally going to get Falcon and Winter Soldier. Uh, don't know when we're going to get Black Widow or the Eternals, but. I mean, they have release dates for them, but I mean, I, I'm just happy we're getting something Marvel finally. <laughs> it's yeah, just like, it, it's it's nuts, man, out there. But I, I'm just happy to finally have something new from Marvel, which is supposed to be a big setup and tie for the new Doctor Strange film. So yeah, that's what I heard. I read some of the things about WandaVision where very much what's going to happen because because we saw the interview with with Paul was it Paul Bettany. The, Paul Bettany, and then I saw one with um. With Elizabeth Olsen, too. Yeah, and he said that it's going to be starting, like, in a 50s setting. Like, the Dick Van Dyke era. Yeah. And from there, they're going to really expand. And, I don't know, like, seeing seeing the trailers and seeing the way that it's going to be ran well together. And, like, the same characters in different, different series, so to speak. I think it's going to be really neat. And I don't... My my theory going in is I think WandaVision is going to be the one that is controlling like those realities. Like, yeah. To her, it is a reality, and because she does have the powers that that were given to her, I think that she's a lot more powerful in this show than like ever before, as far as actually manipulating tangible material. I'm gonna be very. Uh... I'm going to be very excited if Aaron Taylor Johnson makes an appearance in it. Quicksilver? Yeah. Because we haven't yeah. seen him since Age of Ultron. Yeah. And obviously if this is a, if this is an alternate world, obviously the last time we saw Vision in the cinematic universe, he was already dead. Uh, got the stone ripped out of him from Thanos. And now we have a new Vision. We don't know if this Vision is Vision or if this is just all in her reality, in her head. You know, so... Uh, Aaron Taylor Johnson coming on the show is a very big possibility. It is, and you know what? They didn't really explain what they did with the Mind Stone. I mean, within the 
within the you know the format of the Marvel Cinematic Universe, they were going to just put all of the the stones back within. That so time. there there's two two storylines with that. Obviously, the first storyline is in the beginning of Endgame when they go confront Thanos about it. He said he reduced all the stones to atoms. He said he used the stones to destroy the stones. Right. So that timeline that they live in. I guess the stones are just gone, or I don't know if they're going to ever make an appearance again. Right. I don't know if we'll ever see him again, but he, according to Thanos, he used the stones to destroy the stones. Yeah. So, um, but then in the timeline that they went when they did like time heist, yeah. obviously uh, Captain America returns the stones to their appropriate place in time, thus not causing loopholes or uh, alternate realities or whatever. It just really just set back and everything so right oh because he had the case with the scepter yeah so and the scepter was a mind stone so then hopefully that if there isn't any like well that that's the question is how does he have if this vision is vision then how does he have a mind stone um obviously in the comics from what i know or what i've been told is that like iron man like he it, when he gets the stone ripped out of him iron man makes him like this thing where he can still be an ai and live but he remains in that gray form Oh, okay. So I don't know if they're going to do anything like that or reference it. What I thought was cool that they've shown in the trailer is they referenced Scarlet Witch and Vision wearing their original costumes. A uh, Halloween party? Yeah, that <laughs> yeah. was really cool. And they, they, they actually made those into Funko Pops, which i got to get my hands on them. But, um, yeah, you're at, what, 300 now? Or 305? 305. And this is only, like, some of the collection. I got some in my room, too, but most of the collection actually is in here. Um, but I got them pretty much categorized everywhere i mean this is mostly all star wars there's the one i got you yeah Christmas. i'm still gonna i gotta put it in between the batman and the harley quinn right there that's your batman dc well it, it, it varies it goes from like this side dc then it goes to marvel got like tv shows up there music back there fucking other shit that's all mostly star wars and then there's some marvel down there there's all the horror dc's up there these are just all the big ones that i have and then marvel cinematic universe up there Everywhere, man. I mean, the thing I'm getting mad right now, too, is if you look over there under in my display case, there's one missing. And that's the one I can't get myself. Yeah, but anyway, I mean, obviously, I'm missing one from that one. It's It was the first one that actually came out. It's Iron Man flying up. It's the scene from the Avengers where they all circle up. Right. Uh, they're actually coming out with... it's a, Those are all Amazon exclusives, but they're actually coming out with another one, uh, another set of the post credit scene from Avengers where they're eating, where they're eating shawarma. Oh, that's a great one. So yeah, I got. I, I that's the next one I, I'm looking at getting. I'm gonna put it probably right next to it. Of them eating, uh, them in a circle, then eating them eating shawarma. So that'd be cool. But yeah, man, I, I really like. I mean, I'll, to believe it or not, I, I used to hate Funko Pops. I always thought they were stupid. That's hard to believe. Yeah, <laughs> and now I mean, yeah, you look in here, but it's like the first one I actually ever got is right there, the the Deadpool Bob Ross. That is the first one I ever got. And that one's nice. From there, I just I've gotten hooked, and it's become <laughs> 305. I actually met somebody though. Uh, he was on our podcast, on the Mindless Horror Podcast, who just collects the expensive ones, but he gets them right as they're like right when they come out, so they're easy, they're at cheap prices, but then they'll go up in price. All right. He's got over a thousand pops in his collection. Just the expensive ones. Like, what does that look like at at retail value? Is that like he's looking at about forty thousand dollars now, Each? or in total? No, in total. So basically, he'll buy them at the cost they put them out for. So say they bring usually they're the chases, so they go out for about twelve, anywhere from ten to twelve dollars. Right. And eventually, since they're on the chases are limited edition, they go up in price. So he's probably yeah he's probably got some easily in his collection that are worth a couple hundred, couple of thousand. Wow. That go for a lot. So yeah, you thought I was bad. He's got a thousand. Just he doesn't have them displayed everywhere. He's got them in boxes and stuff and in cases, but. Uh, when I heard that, I was like, oh, man, my, I'm a freaking rookie in this game then. <laughs> and he was on the podcast? Yeah, he came out and said that on the podcast, and it, it's nuts, so. Wow. I'm like, That's pretty impressive. He's, he's got a good collection. I, I want to, if, if I ever get the opportunity to go over his house and, and, and uh, hang out with him, I would love to see his collection. I think I would have to wear gloves and everything, you know? Just, oh. I mean, it would just be me just doing that. It wouldn't be like him telling me to do that. It just I would, out of respect for another Funko collector and him having that much Funkos, yeah, just be I like, mean, hey, uh, I'm going to throw on some gloves, you know? Yeah, just in case. And I'm sure he would really appreciate that, too, as far as just like, you yeah. know. Yeah. But, I mean, care factor. 
Yeah, yeah. I mean, I like collecting them now, dude. I'm, I'm, but I'm very like I, I do collect the ones that I, I. That's my issue is I don't really go for any type of the ones that are expensive or anything. Like if I see it, if I like it, then I'll buy it. Right. Um. But I'm very like it's got to be something that I really like. You know, like obviously with DC or Star Wars, Marvel, anything horror. Um. You know that I'll get that. A couple other movies that I've seen Funko Pops for. This is why I can't go to Frankenstein's because I can easily drop two hundred dollars, no problem. I can if I had my entire paycheck, I could probably drop it all there. Oh yeah, definitely. I mean, walk out with like freaking boxes of Funko Pops. I'm wondering what. I think I probably get like that with like different samples, like different samples of music. I think honestly, if if you want to talk about collecting things, uh, right now what it looks like for me is you're uh, building up your equipment arsenal. Yeah, that too. Because I notice you've been buying a lot more equipment, which is always good to have because right. if I need to borrow any equipment, then I know who to go to. <laughs> yeah, let me know, man. Yeah. He's got he's got freaking, and he's got everything, man. He's like, do you want to, before we started the recording this, he actually said, do you want to use this, this, and this? I'm like, <laughs> no, nah, dude, I'm just going to throw the shotgun mic on the camera and we'll just use the audio, we'll record audio separate. Yeah, no, that's a good one. It's, it's, a very, it's a very basic one, obviously. I just throw the shotgun on just so I can sync it up with our audio, so when it comes down to editing, it's just easier for me. That's why I'm clap syncing before every every take. Oh, um, nice. So you, when you clap sync, that's where you edit it out. That's what syncs it all. And then you just go from there. So, Right. It's worked out good. I, I actually learned it from my other friends, uh, TLEV, who you've actually met. Um, Those are some pretty cool guys. Uh, yeah, and they, that's why this guy's sitting here. Is it a gift? No. Uh, that was the char that, that was my, uh, my alter ego from... Try not to get scared challenge <laughs> that I that I won and the title sitting over there. Um, also, there's probably a new title in the works pretty soon. We're gonna buy a custom made title with both of our logos or whatever, and oh, just make a custom belt know. for that. We're all gonna chip in on that, so I'm excited for that. But TLEV, they think they can win. I mean, I beat them two years in a row. So is that through like um, what is that? How is, what is the the try not to get scared challenge started with them with another YouTube channel. And then that YouTube channel kind of retired in a way, but still kind of does like stuff here and there. Uh -huh. And so I picked it up, and I continued the legacy the very next year. Um, and the first year I lost, but I was by myself, and it was like three of them. And then the second year I got help, uh, so then I won. And then this year, it was 1v1, and I won again. Um, so basically we just go through mazes. Not get scared. We just, we film ourselves, we film our reactions going through mazes. Um... This year, this past year, we happened to have the the opportunity to film it the way I've always intended and wanted to film it, which is, you know, have someone follow us with the camera with the lights on to get our reactions, and then, uh, you know, I show the scare, and then I show our reactions, so kind of like how Ellen DeGeneres does hers. So we walk through the maze, and, and basically in post, we, 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 we try to keep track during the maze, but in post, I look at who got scared and whatnot, and... Uh, um, yeah, we count up whoever gets scared the most, and by the end of the night, whoever has the whoever gotten scared the most is the loser, and oh, okay. the ones declared the winner. So uh, this year, last year, I or 2019, I stepped it up and and had a little toy belt that I bought from like Walmart years ago. That was like 20 bucks. It was a wrestling belt, and then this year I stepped it up. I'm like, yeah, we don't need that toy shit anymore. I have the real thing. Ooh, so nice. uh, yeah, that was the belt and. Uh, so we're gonna, we're thinking about pitching in and buying um, a custom one that has like trying to get scared challenge on it and everything. So that's pretty cool, it's especially fun. something that that you hold on to and and gets passed between different groups. It's like it's like a rite of passage, you know. Yeah, and that's that's the thing that that's, and I think I talked to you about this already. That's why I wanted to do a photo shoot of like me as myself with the title and then my alter ego. The Fiend as, like, I have a me dressed and we're, like, back to back and it looked cool, you know, like, it shows me holding the belt and then it shows him kind of, like, on the back, kind of, so I have, like, the, the, the light side and then the dark side. You of, definitely got to get that going. I, I yeah. already know the editing on how to get that taken care of, too. So yeah, so it looks like it's, it's, it looks like it's two people, but it's just me and we're back to face, back to back. Cool. Just put some, go. put some tape down as to where one sits and then put some tape down on where the other sits and perfect is that. But, I mean, you're... Obviously, you're doing a lot, man. You have a lot on your plate, and um, yeah, man, this is going to be kind of like a two-parter because now you're seeing me host, 
but then either it's already out or it's going to be later down because I'm, I'm pre-recording a lot of stuff too, but <laughs> I don't know when this will release uh, in my head, but I have it written down when it will be released, but nice. uh, I'm going to be on the season two of Personal Paradigm. Uh, we're filming that, I think, late, later this, no, it's Tuesday. Yeah. Um, so look out for that too. That's going to be coming up pretty soon. And also just go check out the Personal Paradigm, uh, season one and uh, the beginning of season two or whenever this comes out, wherever he's at in season two. Uh, what, what's the, what's the last, um, last, uh, like, when's the last episode for season two supposed to, yeah. uh, do you know, like, what month that's coming? Are you trying to just kind of put it out one a month, or? So, as far as drop schedule for Personal Paradigm, within this specific season, I kind of want it to lead up to the release of the book, so right. by around September. And I think at the, at the rate that I'm going and the schedule that I do have, it is lined up to around that point because within my schedule, I have about like 20 guests lined up right with, with like just a verbal like, yeah, let's do it. And so within, within and depending on COVID, um, I would like to get those a lot more physical. Zoom is going to be the go-to and, and the key one. Family is always going to be here. You know, right, and we can connect and really, really drop it on that. So, I think I want to say the last episode of that season is probably going to be any time before the holiday season starts. <laughs> right, and so that's ideally. So you're looking like August, early September. Yeah, August and early September, and then after once September hits, it's probably just going to be all the book stuff. Yeah, and, and really dropping that and, and knocking it out of the park. So I think that's that's where I kind of want to land. Anytime in between that, and really just double checking to see what that's going to be planned for. I would like to take a break with the personal paradigm soon um, before the book gets released, just so that way I have time to plan the book and to really see where that lands. Um, and who knows by October or September where we're going to be at as far as a lot of the the COVID stuff and, and yeah, um, and and if all that all lo a lot of those different key parts and so i want to be a lot more conscious around who i bring on to the the show for the most part as far as really driving home this next season because the first season was very much like year zero mm -hmm. it was the framework on how i wanted to set up and i was fortunate to have you on and justine and a lot of the people that were on board and then really just having the weight of of my own my own anchor on it so right so that was my intention now and the second one was to bring a lot more people on to really to really have a lot of uh a lot more voices and so yeah we're gonna we're gonna shoot it uh in my new space uh compared to i, I miss being in the spot i miss being right there <laughs> in that little corner man but uh but yeah, we're definitely gonna we're gonna we're gonna knock it out of the park, and I think this is gonna be really cool. Cause yeah, the personal paradigm it is something that I've been having um, within my head. Big year for both of us, man. Um, you got the, obviously the book part two coming out in uh, September. Personal paradigm on top of all the other things that you're working on. Obviously here done like lockdown nights of horror. We're, almost 2,000 subscribers, Yes. trying to book guests every week and uh, just try to get content out there. On, on, on the gaming side of things, we were, you know, we're working on, um, we're almost to 1,000 subscribers on that channel too. Um, well, you, you got a giveaway coming up too, a raffle? We do. We, we actually have a raffle on the Mad Slash era. Uh, actually, by the time this comes out, that might already be over, but yeah. uh, we, we did a giveaway. Uh, so look out for the Mad Slash, or just go on the Era page, New Era Clan on Instagram. Uh, we gave away an Xbox Series X. Uh, we raffled it off. So um, whoever won that, congratulations. <laughs> <laughs> um, but yeah, it, it's uh, it's a lot of fun. We're almost at 600 on YouTube. Or, uh, not 600. Uh, we're almost at 1,000 on YouTube. We're about 300, oh, and, so 300 and something away. And gaming's a really hard thing to get views and, and things by but we've just been so fortunate with the community we've we've teamed up with the era clan we've just been so fortunate to work with them and, and really them getting the word out right last night actually was nuts we just hit a thousand followers on twitch 
Wow. So that is just, it blows my mind that this. Naifu? Is that him? Good old Naifu. What about Naifu? Naifu, man. man. Shout out to Naifu. That guy Shout has, out to Naifu. I want to start jamming with, with you guys again and really get that locked in. Are all you guys on the new um, platforms? Uh, I think a lot of them uh, are still the uh, Xbox One and stuff like that. I think I'm one of the only ones that has the new Xbox. And they're on the Call of Duty. Um, we, I mean, Cold we, Wars, yeah, we play. I mean, no, we play Modern Warfare, Cold War. I haven't touched Cold War in a while, but uh, it's mostly been Warzone lately. Okay, but let me know when Naifu's on. <laughs> Naifu, yeah. You guy's my hero. <laughs> I'll hit him up, I think, when we do the podcast Friday. See what's going on. Right on. Um, but yeah, I'll hit him up. We'll probably hit, hit it up this week or something. But um, obviously, 11 out right now. Go pick that up. Um, uh, definitely look out for Andrew. Everything Andrew on Graphics by Andrew on Instagram. He's going to keep you informed on what's coming out with Personal Paradigm with his next book. Uh, whatever projects he's working on. Um, if you've seen a lot of the logos here on the channel from the Milestar podcast, Shoot the Shit, East vs. West, uh, Mace Treatments, just to name a few right there, uh, yeah. that was all done by Andrew. Mindless Horror. When is, um, when is, was it Out? Out Loud, my, Out un loud. my uncle's when's podcast. He's gotten some test episodes up, and the episode that he recorded with me was up, um, but they're looking at doing a, a grand reveal pretty soon as oh, it's right like on. the first season starting, so... Hit him up, man. You can be on that podcast too. Yeah, I'm. I'm just. I'm. I'm. I'm really fortunate to just want to keep connecting and, and you know, just really pull all of our resources together. Yeah. You know, pull all of our community, all of our people together, and to really um, hit the ground running after COVID is done. Yeah, you know? I feel that. I want to get people back in studio. I want to go out and do more things. Right. You know, if the parks are open, go check out the parks. I miss, I miss, I miss in the summers going to Universal Studios and then doing construction updates for Horror Nights. That's so fun to me. Meeting up with like TLAB, heading out Universal Studios for the day. Right. Really fun. Um, actually, one of them about a month or two ago just had a baby. Congratulations to Josue. To a new new family. Yeah. New parent. Baby's name is Miles. Cutest baby ever, man. Swear that's that, good. that I will happily hand that kid the Try Not to Get Scared Challenge Championship just to have. <laughs> like, Here you go, you deserve it. You win. <laughs> you yes. win just for the, just for being cute, man. You're all the cutest kid I've ever seen. Um, right on. So shout out to Miles if if he's watching, even though he's probably like two or three months old. So Miles, in three four years, <laughs> like when he started learning YouTube, <laughs> he's gonna he's that kid's gonna take over TLAV like that. Yep. <laughs> TLAV um, Family Edition. Yep. Um, but yeah, man, I mean, I'm, I'm looking forward to a, a, a better 2021, even though it hasn't started as good, right. but I'm looking forward to a better 2021, um, and we'll, we'll see where, where everything, everything goes, man. So good luck on all your future endeavors. I mean, obviously, uh, I see you every day, so we'll talk about it, but yeah, you're probably going to be the first to hear about it before anybody. <laughs> yeah, I usually am. I usually am. He's like, dude, look, look what I learned today. And then I, I take a look what he's doing and. Sure enough, he's creating a video game. Um, but, no, for everyone watching, obviously, if you want to keep up, like I said, with Andrew's daily life uh, or just what he's doing with, you know, his his book career and his music career, video gaming and all that stuff, you can see all the behind the scenes and everything on Graphics by Andrew, his Instagram account. And uh, you have a YouTube channel too, right? Andrew Joseph Zaragoza Jr.? Yeah, it's um, that is definitely in its baby phases we're at six followers hey, uh, six subscribers and um, slowly but surely yeah the gradual slow work and and really really um staying consistent with it so that is it's always been there it is very much going to be a base where all the visual stuff personal paradigm is personal paradigm is available everywhere else as far as google podcasts anchor spotify all that spotify. stuff anchor is the the, the leading and, and distributing the podcast. Yeah, yeah, but the YouTube is going to be something where all my visual stuff is going to be at, and then Instagram is where the top, the top traffic is right now. Top traffic, man. So go check them out. Uh, links in the description below. But Andrew, I want to thank you for being on the show. Obviously, it was not any. It was not easy to get you on the show, man. You know, I had to go a lot of hurdles just to get to you. And by a lot of hurdles, I mean out that door, then out that door, and then boom. It's definitely <laughs> out of. <laughs> your way <laughs> it's a it's a two-door it's a two-door process just to get you on this uh this podcast um 
But yeah, also, again, like I said, uh, be sure to tune in pretty soon. Personal Paradigm, I'll be on that one pretty soon to talk again. Um, yes. So I'm, I'm, dude, I'm looking forward to having you in the space because it's... It's going to be a good one. Yeah. I'm it, looking forward to it. I cannot wait to already start chopping up about Personal Podcast, Personal Paradigm because I've already got... I just filmed episode two recently and... I know, I came home one day and I saw a sign on the door that said, Personal <laughs> Paradigm Recording from 2 to 4. And I'm like, oh, looks like I'm not going through that door. <laughs> so I walked all the way to the front door. Yeah, um, man, I, that's going to be... I, I'm just excited for all that. It's, it's definitely a blessing to have it. A lot of good stuff coming your way, man. Um, but if you guys, honestly, uh, if you guys are new to the channel, you know, we have social media, at Knights of Horror on Twitter and at the Knights of Horror on Instagram. Um, and obviously, if you guys are new to the channel, hit that subscribe button with that bell notification where every time we put up a new video... I'm your host, Anthony. This is the Shoot the Ship Podcast, and we will see you guys next time. Thank you guys for joining.